Hello everybody, it's me, Tonic TZW, and I don't play Legendary Tier a lot because it's a bit of a credit sink and you need a really good game to be actually making some money off it. But having a British Legendary Destroyer gives me a reason to go up there and play a Legendary Tier because I do love my British Destroyers and this one is entitled... Ooh. It's a big one, and trust me, it does turn out to be a very big game. I'm in division with a couple of friends from the other side of the world, old Dirty Biker and his friend Diggy. We've got a Montana, a Yamato, and of course, me in the Daring. We spawn across here between A and B caps, and... I wasn't in control of the division and someone, for some reason, had uh, crossplay turned off, which is why we haven't got a full team. If we'd have had a full team of nine, this could have worked out differently. I might not have had as good a game or I could have had a much better game. But certainly this is one of the highest damage, highest base XP games that I have had in the daring so far. And to be honest, playing at legendary tier, I think you need to be in a division because unrestricted access to legendary ships is a bad thing for this game. I know Wargaming have tried to correct that by introducing, um, should we say, gates with tier 7 ships to prevent people from um, joining the game and just researching a legendary and going straight into legendary tier and then wondering why they haven't got enough credits to repair their ships when they get sent back to port. But we've got a gearing out here, and I think it's a Shimikaze. I can't remember. I didn't pay attention at the start of the game. But I am screening for torpedoes, and I know that um, my two friends behind me are going to be spotted very early on. And what I don't want to be is in a straight line between a destroyer and them, because the chances are that torpedoes will be coming towards them. So I am running my sonar as I push in. I do see the Yamato out there, and I've said it a million times. Caps are king in domination. If you control the caps, you can generate more points than you can from killing ships. Because if you control the caps and kill a few ships, you can get up to your thousand a lot quicker than the other team can. Now it looks like the majority of red team are across there on um, the right hand side of the map between C and D caps. And I don't want to be getting a flank fired from them. But there is a gap there. I think the destroyer that started here has pushed through that gap because I am still located. So we're going to put some torpedoes across there and... Uh, well, basically, we're going fishing. But with 14 seconds left on the cap, a Yamato decides to come around the corner. So I am going to take this cap, try and not to run out before um, it gets taken. The Yamato is pushing round, and we've kept one rack of torpedoes available. And we're going to just put those out there with a spread, because he's going to pick up a little bit of speed once he completes his turn. I pop my smoke and I'm leaving this here as a distraction because where I want to be going next is straight into A cap because it doesn't appear as though there is anything on this side of the map. We do get a torpedo hit through the center. I think we get three torpedo hits through the center there. We get a couple of floods. The Yamato damage controls his flood. So just with a couple of salvos of torpedoes, we've picked up over 66,000 damage. And that Yamato has got himself in a very, very bad spot. Now he is bow tanking my two buddies there at the bottom end of air cap. So we are going to get onto air cap. We're going to angle. And we're going to pop a smoke and we're going to try and get this Yamato on fire because we know that he has damage controlled. So any fires or floods from this point on are going to stick, they're going to tick 
and they're just going to keep adding to our damage total. He can be seen. I can't be seen. I know that I'm a little bit of a dope and a smoke at the moment because either of those destroyers could come back and put some torpedoes through this smoke. But we've got one fire on the Yamato. We're going to look for where he's heading and it does look like he's just doing a complete bum rush. So we're going to keep the pressure on. We're going to try and get another fire on him. Keep popping those. 10 seconds to take this cap. And he is not going to take that cap because he's just going to keep getting reset. He is getting absolutely pounded. Because we're running Smogathon, as we have um, Tire Wit at 16 Legendary 4, we can easily overlap our smoke screens on there. This is what I like about the British Destroyers. It may not be the biggest smoke screen. It may not be the longest smoke screen. You do run the danger of overrunning them because you literally have to slow to almost a complete stop to get yourself some cover. We've lost a destroyer on the other side of the map. And if you look, there is a destroyer, which I think is Red Team's Shimikaze. He is all the way down at the five o'clock position on the minimap. He's obviously looking at pushing flanking torpedoes against all the ships that like to sit on the bottom end of D cap. They have something on D and hopefully the guys across there can keep it reset. I see a smoke screen out there. So I'm going to put a set of torpedoes through that gap because that is where I want to be heading. Conqueror takes out a GK. All they need to do is keep defending that and buy me some time to push through across to sea. I've still got that Yamato out on my left side, but he is of no use to anyone at the moment. He's in a bad position, he's isolated, and he is absolutely broadside. I've got torpedoes available, and you know what I'm going to do? Of course I am. But we're going to single fire them. Another trick of the British destroyers. And you put them a little bit left and a little bit right. And now we're going to turn and push this gap. Now you'll see that there's the shadow of a battleship at the north end of Sea Cap. He hasn't been spotted since the start. And um, I know that ships like to hide behind the island. And I'm taking a bit of a risk here, pushing through this gap. So I'm not going to go charging through. My twist and track switches to my one o'clock. And so I know that there is something there that is closer. And there it is. It is the gearing. He has not got me spotted yet. We take out that Yamato with our torpedoes. And now we go in guns onto the gearing. We pop one of those short smokes. We try and get a few shots onto them, and now we are going to back out of this because I imagine that if he has torpedoes available, they're going to be heading through this gap. So now we're going to play it safe for a moment. That last battleship is still unsighted, and uh, my torps are available again. So now I'm going to push back through this gap. We can see that there is a ship down on D cap. They are going to take that. I'm still located. I know the gearing's out there. My two buddies have pushed into the center of B. So I am now going to push through this gap into C cap. Now they do get a little bit bushwhacked by the Yamato that comes round the bottom and uh, old Dirty Biker takes a huge hit off him. Um, it is the three of us against four um, red team. We still do have a slight advantage on points, but I think that's old Dirty Biker disappears. And that gives red team the advantage. We still have two caps. I'm on a third. That gearing is still out there somewhere. Now that smoke screen 
is up on that cap and you'll notice my twist and track is pointing straight behind this island. I'm running sonar. I know it's a battleship. I'm certain it's a battleship out there. And what I don't want to happen is for him to come around that corner. But the gearing was sat in that smoke screen and he disappears for a dev strike to give us our second kill on a 127,000 damage. This cap is going to give us the lead along with that kill on the gearing. So now there is one place that I'm going ahead, knowing that that battleship is my closest target, and that is down to D cap because we want to stop red team from getting as many points as we possibly can. There we go, it's a Marlborough, and uh, I know and I expect that he has got HE loaded. He is back there. He is going to be looking for me. He's going to be wanting to get a cap back because he knows their destroyer is out there hunting. And if he can hit me, he can take me off the map in one salvo. But I am going to use this gearing smoke screen to pop down. Shimmy gets himself spotted across there on the cap. He's half health. Now, I think he's popped a smoke screen. And I have to make a decision here of, do I leave this cap, let it tick for red and push for the shimmy? Or do I play for the points win, knowing how long we've got left on the clock? My decision is to take the cap because I have enough time to take this, even if red team do push in onto C, because then the red team have to find me to kill me. We do lose Diggy. He goes out to the shimmy. That's unfortunate. It is 2v1. We have almost a 200 point lead. The Marlborough is coming into range, but I think he scrapes the beach there because he kind of stops and then starts picking up speed again. So we're going to just lap these torpedoes out there and then seven seconds to cap he is still the closest target we get the cap and now we're going to turn and get out of here as i said there i mean you know it's not going to be a kraken game because i've only got two kills and there's only two ships left and i'm on my own I imagine that that Shimikaze, given that none of the caps are turning, he is coming to hunt me for this Marlborough. So the smart thing to do here is to run away. We get two torpedoes, we get four torpedoes, we get four floods, four cap resets, and we jump right up to 176,000 damage. Now, I'd like to get a fire on this guy, but as you see, Twist and Track switches to my rear. So using that little island, I'm going to wait till I dip out of cover. And I am going to put a shot onto this Marlborough. There we go. Marlborough is closest now. We get the shots off. We are still spotted, even though he's behind an island. So we pop our smoke. That means that the Shimikaze is right behind us. Told you that Marlborough would have HE loaded, didn't I? But we've risked it for a biscuit. We've tried to work out the position of the Shimikaze. We put a salvo of torpedoes across the end of the island there because he has to slow down. I have no doubt that he's going to take the cap now because I'm not going to risk it for another shot on this one just yet. We're going to continue to sail away. There is a minute 15 on the clock. We're on 917 points on the board. Torpedoes running on the Marlborough. 176,000 damage. We've picked up our high caliber and it's a short game given that it wasn't a full team of ships. But we land two no torpedoes. We get two more floods. 
those ones are ticking and this is my first 200k plus game in the daring and i'm thinking are we going to be lucky and get a third kill with 40 seconds on the clock he manages to damage control it we pop a smoke we pop a salvo we turn out we don't get lucky with a fire perhaps if i had waited a few seconds longer but we aren't spotted by the shimikaze either 20 seconds left on the clock we're going to turn out we're going to just fire our last salvo of torpedoes out there we might get lucky we might not but as the clock ticks down through 10 seconds we actually hit the thousand point limit for the game so there you go 14 torpedo hits 12 floods 206,388 damage and an absolutely whopping 4031 base xp we played smart and we took the win on that one so i hope you've enjoyed watching my big one get waved around a little bit if you have do hit that like button and if it's your first time past here don't forget to subscribe to the channel hang around click one of these links watch another video watch a playlist watch them all i've been tonic ttw that was the dairy until next time take care and goodbye